What's going on guys and welcome to another Crack a Pack episode. Today we are opening up a pack of Amon Ket. This is a set that we open up quite often on this uh, channel, but it's actually a really fun one. It was a pretty good draft set. Uh, I had a lot of fun playing with this one. I know Will and I did some online drafting. Fun fact, we made a red deck wins work very, very well, uh, which was actually really, really sweet. We just loaded it with flings and like scary stuff and it was great. So uh, did really enjoy drafting this set. So I'm hoping that we can figure out what our pack one pick one pick would be uh, fairly easily. But of course we are gonna go through every card and our first one here is Takrop Skirmisher. It's a two one for one and a blue. It does have Embalm. Uh, so for three and a blue, you can exile this card from your graveyard and create a token that's a copy of it, except it is a white zombie Naga warrior with no mana cost. Uh, emblem only as a sorcerer, Embalm, excuse me, only as a sorcery, so you can't do it in instant speed. Uh, cards like these are actually really solid because you get double use out of them. Uh, Embalm's very, very powerful. Really, really love it, uh, and tokens actually have some synergy with this set just in general. Uh, so this is actually a really solid two drop. It's not a bad start to the pack. It's not something I want to first pick by any means, but it isn't bad. Uh, Bloodlust Insider is a 1-1 one, one for 1 red, and it can tap it. Target creature gains haste until end of turn. This was actually an all-star in the mono red deck because uh, you can just give stuff haste and they start swinging early. Uh, so this guy obviously is going to get outpowered very, very quickly, but uh, your other creatures might not. Being able to give them haste means that you're going to be able to swing in earlier and faster and hopefully just deal tons of damage. Uh, I think generally speaking, I'd rather have the skirmisher over this, but uh, this is a very, very powerful one drop for sure. Uh, Sacred Cat is a 1-1 one, one for 1 white. It does have a lifelink and it has Embalm as well for 1 white. Uh, this is actually a pretty solid card too. Uh, it's a good 1-drop. 1-1 uh, one, one lifelinker early on, perfectly fine by me. Being able to bring it back for 1 white is also pretty efficient. It just gives you an extra play uh, in, the, in the main phase of your own turn, which I like. Uh, and so this is actually not a bad card. I think I'd still rather have the Skirmisher just because it has a little bit more bite to it. Uh, but a 1-1 one, one lifelinker for 1, I'll take that any day. It's not a bad card by any means. Uh, Benefaction of Ronus is a sorcery for two and a green. Reveal the top five cards of your library. You may put a creature card and or an enchantment card from among them into your hand and then put the rest into your graveyard. This actually has some synergy with some of the embalm mechanics and some graveyard synergy stuff, but uh, I generally don't like cards like this in limited, just in general. They're okay in certain decks, but it's a very small margin to make this card good. There's generally speaking just better options to do at three mana. And so I'd rather be doing something that impacts the board a little bit, not just it digs me into stuff. So. For me, not super exciting. Uh, probably wouldn't want that card. Uh, miasmic. Miasmic? I don't know. Uh, Mummy is a 2-2 for one and a black. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, each player discards a card. Again, this has synergy with the embalm stuff. You can discard one of your embalm creatures and then bring it back either the same turn or the next turn. Uh, and then hopefully you're kind of nugging your opponent for a card. And this, in, in my experience, I will say this tended to be just kind of an average two drop, uh, usually because a lot of decks just naturally had some embalm creatures in them uh, because they were so powerful. And so it seems like a lot of the time when you did this, you kind of just throw away a creature and your opponent also throws away a creature with embalm and then you both get a, the same use out of it. So it's, it's fine, uh, but it just doesn't seem to do enough for me. I will say also though, zombies did have a good bit of synergy in this set, so it is worth it in that deck. Uh, Scribe of the Mindful is a 2-2 two, two for 2 and a blue. Pay 1 and tap it and sacrifice it. Return target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. I find this to be a huge, huge buff in a, in a deck where you do have one of those big payoff instants or sorceries. Uh, generally speaking, I'd rather have the payoff card first and then pick these because they are common. You're going to be able to pick them up late uh, in the pack most of the time. Uh, and so there are instances where this is good, though. Uh, honestly, though, too, uh, being able to block with this then use its ability means it's going to hopefully uh, just keep you from losing a little bit of life, but then also just bring back, it could be any spell. Uh, anything that's really just solid as an instant or sorcery, you can bring back with this. So uh, just some random value. I found this to be a pretty okay card. Uh, not my favorite, but didn't mind it. Uh, Supernatural Stamina is an instant for one black. Uh, until the end of the turn, target creature gets plus two, plus zero, and gains when this creature dies, return it to the battlefield tapped under its owner's control. 
Uh, I found this to be a pretty good combat trick. Uh, it's very, very efficient. Uh, it does give you a big boost with plus two, plus zero. Uh, and then also bringing the creature back to the battlefield is actually really solid because that just means you can trade it away and not really have to worry about it. Uh, so I do like this card, but it is still a combat trick. I wouldn't want to take this early. Uh, but if I was in black and needed some tricks, this is one of the best. Uh, Stinging Shot is an instant for one green. Put three negative one counters on target creature with flying, and then this also has cycling for two. So you can pay two, discard it, and draw a card. Cycling was also a big part of this set. Uh, and what I like about a card like this is it's an, a really efficient way to kill uh, uh, flying creatures. So it's actually really, really solid. But no matter what, it has use. So even if your opponent doesn't have a flyer out and you draw this card and you really just don't need it, you can just cycle it away. Uh, it gives you that benefit, and something that we saw a lot of during this draft environment was cards like this would get played main deck because it didn't actually make that big of a difference. Uh, you can just cycle this away if you just don't have a target, which makes it good no matter what. Uh, so I do like this card. Honestly, it's kind of better than the Skirmisher in my opinion. Uh, that might be incorrect, but I also don't... well, okay. Magma Spray uh, is an instant for one red. Uh, deals two damage to target creature. If that creature would die this turn, you exile it instead. This is very efficient removal. Uh, deals with a lot of stuff early game, and it exiles, which gets around the embalm stuff, which is huge in this set. So definitely so far the pick. That's just efficient removal. Always got to take it. Uh, Inno Ketra's name is an instant for one and a white. Zombies you control get plus two, plus one until the end of the turn. Other creatures you control get plus one, plus one until end of turn. So this does have some use no matter where it's in, uh, or excuse me, what deck it's in. But uh, this is really at its best in a zombie deck. Again, that synergy is really, really good. They are one of the big tribal synergies in this set. Uh, and you can do some really broken stuff, but you really need the flagship cards first. I would not early pick this, but if I was in zombies, definitely, definitely want this. This is 100% a game ender for that deck. Our first uncommon is Ruthless Sniper, so it's a 1-2 for 1 black. Whenever you cycle or discard a card, you can pay 1, and if you do, you put a negative 1 counter on target creature. It's actually a really powerful 1-2, uh, excuse me, 1 drop. Uh, I like being able to play this early on, and it's going to power out uh, just some of your cycling stuff. It helps you uh, deal with some of the creatures on board. The synergy there is just fantastic. I think, honestly, I'd still rather have Magma Spray, but that might be incorrect. This is just a really solid one drop. Uh, Grasping Dunes is a land. It is a desert, which again does have some synergy in this set. Uh, you can tap it for one generic mana, or you can pay one, tap it, and sack it. Put a negative one counter on target creature. Activate this only at a time you could cast a sorcery. Not super exciting. Uh, if you're not in a like color intensive deck, you may play this uh, just as a little bit of an extra removal hit. Uh, but in general, it's just not that good. Generic lands tend not to do well in limited because a lot of times you end up in multicolor decks and you kind of don't want to waste a, uh, a slot in your deck on something that can't really help you cast all these spells. So not a huge fan of this card. Uh, Baleful Amit is a 4-3 for two and a black. It does have lifelink and it enters the battlefield uh, you put a negative one counter on target creature you control. This is actually really powerful. You can deal a lot of damage with a card like this, uh, especially on turn three. Four three is pretty powerful. With lifelink is even more powerful. Yes, you do have to put a negative one counter on a creature you control, but it could either be this creature or any other creature. It doesn't have to be this one. So uh, you can throw it on something that's already been outpowered and it kind of doesn't matter. There are actually cards that benefit from negative one counters, so you could throw it on one of those if you've got one. Uh, honestly, I think this beats out Magma Spray. It's just too powerful and too efficient. And then our rare is Harvest Season. It's a sorcery for two and a green. Search your library for up to X basic land cards, where X is the number of tapped creatures you control. Put those cards onto the battlefield tapped, and then you shuffle your library. I don't really like this card. It is a big swing. Uh, if you've got a lot of creatures early game, you can actually get a lot of lands with this. And then next turn, untap with a ton. I generally think that's kind of a corner case. Normally, it's only going to be one or two. And yes, that's a buff. Don't get me wrong. And it does help you fix your mana if you're in a multicolored deck. But in general, it just isn't that high impact. Uh, and so for me, it's a pretty easy Baleful Emmet. I will say Magma Spray is a pretty close second. That card is fantastic in this set in particular. Uh, but feel free to disagree with me in the comment section below as always. And if you did like this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. Also make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, 
I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack-A-Pack episode.